So actually, I'm just going to talk about Emacs and how hard it was to get my presentation <laughs> to run in Emacs. So, um, now, my name is Greg File. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about duality um, and how you can use it to delete half of your code. Half is kind of the upper bound, so it's a little, little optimistic, maybe. Um, but, so, but some portion of your code, um, hopefully, and definitely in uh, a bunch of functional libraries um, deleting code. So if, um, oh, I don't, my clicker doesn't work, but the laser pointer part does, so we'll see. Um, so I'd start off with what is a category. Uh, how many people haven't seen one of Runar's talks um, at this conference? So everybody has heard probably this slide at least two or three or four times. Um, but uh, just to go over it really quickly, a category has objects and arrows between those objects. Those arrows compose, and for each of those objects, there is an identity arrow that leads back to that same object. Uh, in Scala, we often talk about a category of Scala, which is um, Scala's types are the objects, and uh, the arrows between them are functions. Um, there's also other ones. Somebody uh, earlier today, sorry, I forget which talk. Uh, I think it was Long, uh, maybe? Uh, anyway, mentioned uh, Clisley. Maybe somebody else also mentioned Clisley. Um, and, uh, and in that, the objects in the category are also types, uh, but the arrows look different. They are functions, but they're these Clisley functions that go from some A to B in some monad, right? Um, so they look different, but they have this, they're also a category. And we also often deal with functors, uh, at least in the world of type level and stuff like that. Uh, we call them functors, but they're really endo functors in the category, or yeah, in the category of Scala, something like that, because they're only um, functors from Scala to Scala, right? Not functors between arbitrary categories. Uh, and in that case, it's type constructors that look, you know, this kind of shape, like list or option and stuff, are the objects, and the arrows between them are these natural transformations. So just from like list to option. Um, as opposed to like concrete um, proper types. Um, and so duality um, comes from, is, is built on top of this uh, notion of categories, where for every category, there is what's called the opposite or dual category. Um, and, uh, and so both categories have the same objects. So if, if there's the category of Scala, say, uh, its objects are also, or its objects are Scala's types, and the dual category, its objects are also Scala's types. The difference is that every arrow in the, in the original category, A to B, has a corresponding arrow B to A in the opposite category. So you're basically reversing the arrows, is the, the notion behind this. Um, and if you take the opposite of the opposite category, you get back to your original category. Um, so. so let's take a simple example here. This is definitely stripped down from the commutative diagrams you see in category theory or whatever, but it's just illustrative. Um, so you have some tuple type, and it has um, a function first, right, that gives you a type A, and a function second that results in some, you know, type B, right? Um, so if we reverse these arrows, as we talk about in duality, we end up with something else, right? We have something that you have a function from A to something, and you also have a function from B to something. And so there's something here that is the dual of the tuple. Anybody have an idea what that that type might be that has two functions? It looks like this. Code What's a code tuple? <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Uh, co-product. Yeah, yeah, co-product, or as we usually call it, uh, either, right? So um, either it turns out is the the dual of tuple, and um, and you have these operations, right? Left takes some type A and gives you an either. And um, right takes some type B and gives you an either, right? Um, so that's a, that's a very simple illustration of uh, this duality. And uh, let's see. Uh, an important thing that uh, has raised questions in the past is that we're talking about types here, not values. So while you have this duality between this tuple and this corresponding either, you can't just take the dual of some actual value that has a three and A and get something that represents that in, in an either, right? Like here, you lose the A, if you were to take right, you lose the, the three, and you can't get back to the original thing from that. There, there, the dual, or this, this notion of duality and categories in general is talking about the type level and not the, not the values in those types. So, you know, let's go some more into like, this, what does it mean to reverse the arrows like at the code level or, you know, the way we actually write things in Scala? So here's Functor, um, a type class that I uh, imagine many people here are familiar with. Um, um, the, the normal way of defining it is with this map operation. 
right? Given some f of a and a function from a to b, you get an f of b. Uh, there's another function in there called lift. Lift is a little bit more useful and its definition for our purposes. So we're going to be using that. But you can see that they're, they're just the same function with the order of the arguments switched, right? And so lift takes a function a to b and returns a function f of a to f of b. Um, so like let's take that function and reverse the arrows, right? Like we literally just typed backward arrows in here, but that, that doesn't, Scala doesn't like that so much. So we can reverse the whole thing, right? And now we just flip the letters in those functions. So now we have a function from b to a and a function from f of b to f of a. Well, it turns out that's actually just still just functor, right? So, so functor is self-dual. Self, when you, when you take the dual of functor, um, you, or when you take the dual of functor itself, you get functor back um, and the same exact operations. And this is different from variance. Um, variance is one of those things that people often confuse with duality because you have covariant, contravariant, they sound like opposites in some way, and they are in some way, but not in this uh, notion of categorical duality. So go through uh, another example with composition. Right, you have a couple, takes two functions and returns a new function, right, that is um, basically applying G and then applying F, right? So it composes those together, so now I have an A to C. So again, if we just sw swap those arrows, just, just textually, and then flip them so that they're actually pointing the right way so Scala likes them, uh, we get a new function, and then, which is actually just compose with the, um, the arguments reversed. So when you take the dual of you know, two composed functions, you actually take the dual of each of those functions and compose them in the opposite direction. Right? So now you have this like, notion that you can like, take duals of multiple things and combine them with, compositionally, just you know, as we do with everything in category theory. Right? Everything is composition. Uh, and so here's a kind of summary of that. The dual of the composition of f and g is the dual of g composed of the dual of f. Right? So that's this, this equivalence that we're seeing here. People following this still so far? I'm trying to go through a few, few examples. Um, there's a lot of other duals that, that come up, especially in functional uh, libraries and stuff like that. Uh, monad is dual to comonad. Um, and then specific instances of these things are, also have duals. So reader is dual to in the environment uh, comonad, which is the same as writer, as we just discussed, except without the restriction of a monoid on the, the log that you're collecting, basically. Um, writer's dual to traced, which trace is similar to a reader, but without um, the monoid constraint. Or sorry, uh, it's reader with the monoid constraint, I mean. Um, state and store are duals, free and co-free, other you know, um, types you may have may be somewhat familiar with. Uh, traverse and distributive, and if you're familiar with recursion schemes at all, as I like to talk about them, um, recursion and co-recursion are also dual to each other. Uh, and, and concretely, these type classes that exist in recursion scheme libraries. So one more, one more example of taking a dual. Um, just in this case, just showing the two constructions and, and looking at them back and forth. So um, monad and comonad are dual to each other. Uh, you write a W here just because it's an upside down monad in some way. I don't know. Um, but that's the, the mnemonic for this sort of thing. Uh, and it has basically these two operations in each one. So if you see pure is an A to M of A. And if, again, if you like swap that arrow in here in this context, Right, you have this dual notion of pure, uh, which is extract, which given some value in a comonad, will extract that value from it. Um, and so that's, you know, these two you can see map back and forth that way. Um, and flat map, another um, hopefully somewhat familiar function to Scala programmers, um, you know, takes a function uh, in this, this Kleisley um, function and basically returns a function m of a to m of b. I've, I've rejiggered the arguments uh, order a little bit to make things uh, more obvious, but uh, hopefully more obvious. Uh, and then again, this takes this applies that error reversal, right? And I switched the names of the argue, of the type parameters here just to make it easier to see that you know we flipped this arrow here, so we take the wb to a instead of the a to wb or to mb, and then here we go b to a uh, instead of a to b. But um, and this is also called extend and Haskell and um, in other contexts, but. Uh, but yeah, so here's another, another example of, of these things pairing up, right? And so in category theory, you can do this to everything. Um, so it's a, it's a very widespread phenomenon. And as I mentioned earlier with the composition stuff, these things compose. This is Haskell, sorry. Um, but uh, but I, I felt like that, that this syntax made it a little bit clearer what was happening here. And this is a more complicated thing. 
But because you know we have all these simple cases of these things um, composing and build or of these things, and they since they compose together, you can get fairly complex things. And this is only like middling complexity of, of this sort of stuff. But you can see here, so these two op operations, gcata and gana, uh, which is this is a generalized fold and a generalized unfold. Um, but uh, they're just duals of each other, right? So here the functor, self dual, right? So we still have a functor here in that constraint. Comonad and monad are duals to each other. Uh, each of these, each of these functions takes, or yeah, each of these functions takes two functions and basically returns another function. And if you look at each of those lines, um, they are all duals of each other. F of W to W of F, and this is M of F to F of M. And then here you have the A to F of M, and here the F of W to A. And then from A to some fixed point of the functor, and here you go from the fixed point to some A. So all these, each line here is just swapped, right, based on that arrow. And uh, and to convert the the implementation, um, the same thing happens as I mentioned with the the way you compose two duals, right? Is you take the dual of each thing and compose them in the reverse op, uh, order. So here you have extract, which is dual to pure, right? And then again in the reverse order you have kata and ana, which uh, trust me are dual. Um, but, uh, and then within those, they each take a function parameter. And so um, if you look inside that function parameter, you have here f map, which is dual to itself, that's mapping, right? So you have here this, which takes one of these arguments, which again is their dual of each other, right? And then, then you have the k com coming, uh, well, before computationally, but after syntactically here. Uh, and then here it's, you know, in the other position. And then finally, f map again with join on the monad and duplicate on the comonad. So you can just mechanically create this, right, from looking at this. You don't actually have to know what this really does. Um, you probably have to know what the individual operations do, but you don't have to think through the, uh, the, the operation of this to, to construct this. Um, and I'll show you the same thing in Scala. It doesn't come across quite as clearly, but, um, but just quickly, you know, you have the constraint, constraint changes here. Um, this and this are dual, this and this are dual, and the same here, join and co-join, uh, pure and extract, uh, kata and ana. And it all ends up being the same thing, but because you don't have, um, don't as easily have that composition operator, it doesn't, doesn't come across as clearly, I, I thought. Uh, oh, and this, this composition at the type level is, uh, is short for, for that, which is exactly composition, right? Like, um, you're used to writing, you know, f of g of something and, and this um, are the same thing. So it's just a shorthand. Um, so yeah, as I mentioned, you, know, you could do all this stuff mechanically. And uh, working in recursion schemes, it come up a lot where I would define some new operation. And the first thing I would do after that was figure out how to do the dual operation of that. And it was getting to the point where these things got more and more complicated. And I would just sit there and look at the types, convert the types, just walk through it. And it's like, well, that sounds like something that I don't need to do, right? So uh, I wrote this library called Dualizer, uh, which automatically, given some operation, will generate the dual operation of it. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't exist in Scala yet. Um, and I'll talk about that in a second. But I'm just gonna go through very quickly um, in a very, hopefully, um, not hard to translate between languages way. But uh, you have a couple operations. This dual type takes some type, right? And this, this syntax here with these brackets is uh, Haskell's quasi-quoting. So it's basically just giving me this type as an AST that I can like do stuff with, as opposed to just you know being a type in the language. Um, so basically, I have this operation on types that, given a type, will create the dual. And so this actually compiles right the dual of this either as a tuple, and here's a tuple that satisfies it. And in the other way, and with uh, universal quantification here, we have um, you know it works over this stuff as well. So you can take the dual of this, and you get something that left three satisfies because the dual isn't is an either. Um, the same thing applies to the expression level. It's not part of the category theory, but you know you need an implementation for these functions if you're going to create them. Um, so um, the operation write, uh, if you take the dual of it, you get, um, you know, so so write has a signature for some value b, you know, return an either a b. Um, but if you take the dual of that expression, you have something that matches this type. Given a tuple, return a b, right? So I don't have to write the implementation. I get it from this. And the same here, this is the, the inverse, right? It's the dual of second is right, where second has this type signature, right? But you get the dual of that operation, you get something that actually satisfies this type. Um, so those are the two fundamental operations in this library. Um, but they're hidden behind other nice things where you can quote like an arbitrary declaration, like here's kata defined, 
uh, and you say that you want to call the dual Anna, and it generates this code for you. Um, so now you've managed to delete a whole bunch of code, especially in a recursion scheme library or something like cats, you could delete tons of code by, um, by using this approach. Uh, and, and it works for tons of things. You can take duals of, of you know, type families and data declarations and stuff like that. Um, and I thought that this would be extremely hard to do in Scala for, for a number of different reasons. Um, so I was not very hopeful. Until recently, um, I saw someone posted a neat, oh, sorry, let me, let me uh, one slide that I didn't really remember was here. But yeah, so the whole point is this thing is actually only like of middling complexity in a lot of the um, functional um, code that, that I end up writing. And so as these things get more and more complicated, like the benefit of deleting chunks of this with like large numbers of constraints. And in fact, this is over constrained. There's, the, the way the code actually exists has more type constraints and less concrete types, believe it or not. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so being able to delete like, you know, large chunks of code like this and only having to reason about half the code that you have that, you know, uh, than you used to um, is, is very nice. Um, so this is the library that someone um, recently posted, I guess chemist, uh, who I do not know, but um, wrote this nice library for Scala that automatically derives implementations of functions from types using the Curry Howard um, isomorphism um, correspondence, one of those things. Um, and, uh, and it's pretty impressive, right? Because this is an implementation of, this is the actual implementation of the reader monad. And I want to do that for all of my code, right? <laughs> so, so this is, there's a macro behind this that, you know, that actually figures out, you know, what the implementation of these things is. And for, it actually ends up using a bunch of the same kind of tricks that I'd like, that I use or would like to take advantage of uh, in doing something like dualizer for Scala. So I only found out about this recently. I think it's actually fairly newly published. Um, but it's exciting for me that it, that it kind of gave me the realization that it, maybe it's not as difficult as I thought it would be to, to port that kind of code. Uh, and ideally we get to something that looks like this, a nice commutative diagram, right, where we have um, uh, dualizer can, can basically handle this thing, right, converting a type to its dual and converting an expression to its dual. And Kerry Howard handles this thing, giving it a type, get the implementation. And so, like, you know, you should be able to apply it either way from um, given some type, do an implement, and then apply the dualizer to both the type and the expression, or um, given a type, dualize it, and then apply Kerry Howard to both the type and the co-type and get it. And we should have you know, something that all works. Uh, and it would be wonderful magic and hopefully we'll get there. Um, but of course it's not that easy. Um, in practice there are various things that get in the way of this. Um, just from a, uh, um, just from um, the dealing with the reversing the arrows thing, right? I said very syntactically, oh, just reverse the arrows, reverse the arrows. But it turns out that that doesn't work in lots of cases. Like here's, here's functor, right? But with the traditional map definition. Well, if we take the arrow and reverse it, um, well, we just had one arrow to reverse this time for some reason. So it, what this definition is, is actually contravariant, right? So, but this is variance, right? This is covariant versus contravariant functors. This is not the same as duality. I just, I said that earlier and, um, and so how do we end up with something like this? We shouldn't be able to. Um, and another case is, uh, you know, we have lift, as I showed before, and we have the same lift function, but just written slightly differently as a, as a carried function here. And, um, and now we have three arrows. But if we reverse those, we get something that, I don't know when that would be useful. I guess you could implement it if you had some common add for f. Um, but, uh, but that is definitely not the dual of functor either, right? So, so what is the distinction here that makes these arrows, um, you know, not, not work, make this flipping of the arrows not work in these cases. Um, so the thing is that they're different arrows, um, it turns out. And, uh, and so to, to kind of abstract over this, we need to get back to the notion of a category. Um, and a category exists as a type class in cats. So there's some category um, with arrows from, you know, some type to, or from type to type, basically. Um, and they compose, just as categories do, right? You have some arrow, B to C, you have another arrow, A to B, and you can compose them and get a new arrow, A to C. And then they all, there's an identity arrow for every object, every type, right? Um, so you have some arrow, A to A, which is the identity arrow. And here's the implementation for function one, which is normal Scala functions, right? So you can see it's specialized here. This is, this is, you know, this code compiles. This is specialized literally to just be the same functions that we're used to seeing and identity is the same identity we're used to seeing. 
Um, and then with using this, there's actually a number of different categories that exist, right? Uh, Cleisley was mentioned earlier. There's the dual of that for comonadic stuff, which is co -Cleisley. Um In uh, Monocle, um, the, uh, which is an optics library, there are um, categories for isomorphisms, for lens, for prism, uh, and for other structures as well. Um, and so, so using this, using this category thing, we can change functor a little bit itself, right? And so now we have the same, same parameterization here, but now instead of just having lift have three syntactic arrows, right, this is what we had before. Instead of those three syntactic arrows, we've now added two type variables here, um, j and k, that have the same shape as a function, right? They take some type and result in some type. Um, and then we say there's the input arrow uh, and the output arrow. Basically, if those are those are you know generalization of arrows over category, and these things uh, I, I eliminated the fact that or avoided mentioning the fact that they actually have to be categories, so things would fit on the slide. But these have to be instances of category um, for all of this stuff to work. Um, but now we can see a distinction between this arrow, right, and these arrows in our various categories, and so we can reverse you know this A and B in here to get the dual, and reverse this FA and this FB to get the dual without worrying about this function level arrow that is still, that still exists. Uh, and just as an example, you can turn any existing functor instance into this same thing. This is the same instance. It just adds here specifying that this category is the category where functions are the arrows, and as is this one, right? So everything that's currently an instance of functor is an instance of this new kind of functor with this exact, these exact two lines added. Um, in fact, you could define this as a super class, like exo functor is actually what I tend to call this in code, um, and have functor extend exo functor. Let's see here. And, um, you know, we're talking about duality here. So we define a new category, uh, which is the opposite category. For some existing arrow category definition, um, we can take the opposite of that category and we can run it to get the dual. So, right, so the opposite for some function one A B is B to A, right? So now we can you know, define a type that represents this opposite category and define an instance for these opposites, right? And composition works the same way as uh, you know, that equivalence I showed before. To get the, um, the dual of you know, this opposite and that opposite, you take the dual of G and the dual of F and compose them in the opposite order from the way they were up there. Um, and identity is a trivial constructor. Um, so now we've added a new instance to this, this kind of thing. And so now you can create the opposite of any of these existing categories, right? So you can opposite of function one, opposite of Cleisley, opposite of co Cleisley, which, um, yeah, won't, won't get into that. Um, and also, just as an uh, interesting side thing, that new functor type also subsumes contravariant. Um, which is another, another type class in, in CAS stuff where you have function B to A results in A to B, right? This is the, the um, variance um, that kind of came up before. But now all you have to do is turn, before we had um, both of these categories being, you know, a standard function one, right? Um, and now this one is the opposite of function one, which just means that here we use this, which is the same as B to A. So now we have, with the standard functor, well, standard, uh, the new functor that I created, we now have a contravariant functor from B to A that results in, uh, in this case, for equal, equal A to equal B. Um, so we've unified these two type classes now. And, and in fact, I have, again, done it such that this new functor is called exo functor, and the standard functor extends it specializing to function one for both of these, and contravariant extends it with this particular specialization of, of those parameters. So now you have a more generic class you can use. Um, if you're working with categories, um, you can ignore whether you're dealing with functors or, co or cont contravariant functors. And so anyway, this is all done to allow us to distinguish between these different kinds of arrows, right? So now we can tell here that this arrow and this arrow um, are distinct from this arrow that's in the middle that, that stays. And it allows us to do this dual dualization more consistently. Um, there's still guesswork involved. There's, there's definitely like little annotations to give to indicate like in a particular case which two arguments or parameter and results should be swapped in different cases. There's, uh, unless more and more code gets written in this kind of style, um, there's always going to be that. 
but you know, hopefully um, working at this level can, can simplify some of that stuff. Um, and uh, this great quote, at least from my perspective, um, most if not all constructions in the category theory are parametric on the category, uh, which leads us to a new style of programming which could be dubbed category parametric programming, which to me is an amazing thing. Like there's a bunch of different approaches used in this code um, using kind projector, or sorry, not kind projector, using kind polymorphism, um, which I eliminated from this talk earlier, um, to, uh, to kind of approach this, but none of them are fundamentally about categories. All of these things, all the categories I've talked about are a very specific subset of categories, and actually being able to think at the category level um, is not really generically or you know, um, possible. It's not like fundamental to, to most or any programming languages that I'm I'm uh, aware of. So trying to unify these things under a more consistent um, structure would be, I think, amazing. And um, kind of um, this, this hierarchy of, of mind exploding ideas, I, I feel like, uh, all leading to this kind of category polymorphism as the, as the final thing. Um, so anyway, I uh, work at a company called Formation uh, in San Francisco, but they uh, are very remote friendly. Ross, uh, as he mentioned earlier today, uh, also works there. We do both Scala and Haskell uh, using a bunch of type level libraries. Um, I am Greg File, and this, these slides will eventually be somewhere up under my GitHub account. Uh, any questions about stuff in the back? Uh, so, <laughs> Sorry, say that again. Do you have to handle non termination when you switch arrows at certain points? You have to handle non-termination when, when switching arrows at any point. Um, not when switching the arrows, because basically all of these structures effectively have to be inductive anyway, the way that they're, they're created. Um, when you're doing, applying it to recursion schemes, you definitely get um, you know, like non-terminating non like co-recursive structures from that, but the, the creation of the, of the dual, the creation of functions to do that stuff, it will terminate just, just fine. Anything else? All right.